Hello and uh, welcome to Channel UTM. This is a tutorial based research channel and this is a tutorial. So um, if you stumbled upon this um, and you're expecting something else, go and have a look at the videos um, and then you'll probably understand why I'm doing tutorials and I uh, explain what I do. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at um, how to use um, the dodge and burn tools. <clears throat> so, I don't know what I'm doing here, I've just grabbed a load of stuff and uh, we will have to see, I'm trying to get this to do something. Excuse me, that's not working. No, that's a good start. Okay, right. So, um, presuming you've got the GIMP software and you sorted your interface out and stuff, this is the tab where these are the main tools. This is pretty much all you're going to be using. Um, here we have the dodge, here we have the burn, shadows, midtones, highlights. Basically, uh, dodge makes the um, pixels lighter and burn makes them darker um, we have highlights midtone shadows um, it will choose those itself don't quite know how that works but um, yeah you can copy my settings here apart from this one which is the the size of the brush um, obviously and that gives you the, that is the amount of pixels. So let's quickly go and I'll demonstrate that. So you can see the size of that circle there. That is 301 pixels. If this image was twice the size, um, which is in the resizing tutorial, that circle would be half the size again so okie doke right so I'm just going to demonstrate we've got th there's a few images we're going to be looking at and uh, two of them are Apollo 9 and Apollo 10 but just to start off to give you something to relate to um, I will show you what um, these tools do so if we start on dodge which is light and and we start with highlights which is obviously the lightest color in the image um, that's on 70% exposure this is what you'll play with this quite a lot depending on what the image is depending if it's a light image or a dark image or a color image but also you will with the midtones and shadows um, because it it's more aggressive the darker the, the tones get which you'll find out so if I just drag that through there you can see that's done 70% of um, the light tones now you notice the lines so if you go over something again it's going to give you a, a double up of the exposure that you put on it okay and this is the reason I do this as well um, is when you're working on the maps this is something you want to avoid because as you can see it starts confusing and laying new um, patterns down which you don't want to do so this is why I have the, my settings um, very soft um, not aggressive at all um, because I don't want people to get confused it's confusing enough looking at these images if, if you if you don't understand them there's a it takes a while to learn how to look at these images so let's uh, dodge 
the right okay right hold on let's go back um okay so we've got midtones dodge you can see that's a lot more a lot more aggressive Oops, if that happens, you need to click on there. This can get a little bit fiddly. Um, okay, and shadows, which is going to be the dark. So it's on the light setting. So the only thing that's really going to, I think, will, it will attack the black. You see? An element there. So the more we go... Okay, this is an Apollo 10 image, and um, just so you know, I haven't, it has got a number, 4162, um, it's either come from March to the Moon site, um, or the Lunar Orbital Gallery site, there are other sites, this it, there, there's hundreds of images on these on these sites um, so it's a case of just taking your pick also the NASA photo gallery um, which is a staple really so let's have a look at this image now not always I tend to steer away from using um, contrast and brightness initially on an image um, because I've found that it it can um, bleach out or darken out um, details that you want to keep. But with these images, um, you can have a go. I'll, I'll just I'll just demonstrate. Um, so I would do brightness, contrast, brightness contrast it, it's all a case of experimenting and this is what you'll need to do um, so you can see we can keep pulling and pulling but you're starting to lose stuff here so but that is a way around it and in a lot of these images especially on the um, uh, the Dione moon which I've just recently done um, you can apply that um, so, but what I initially do is um, before this is enlarged, um, you can see it's very small. So it's only 450 pixels across. Um, the reason I do stuff, a majority of the um, things before it's enlarged is that your computer can struggle with it. We, we haven't all got like super fast computers and stuff um, and it will slow down. And also the darker um, the range you use, the slower it will, it will do that as well. I mean, if I've got a large image, my computer will gurgle and sometimes it, you know, it will not respond and even shut down the image so um, just be aware of that so what I would initially do is with this is I will go to burn midtones and I bump that right up the exposure um, wouldn't have it that big and just see what that does Now this is all basically the way I like to do it, um, but you might find a different way. Some people, especially on the darker images, like to use the mid-tones first and stuff. It's much, much quicker, but you can lose the highlight stuff <clears throat> basically because you haven't brought that out beforehand. So um, it all makes sense. 
So then you can go back in again and you can slowly see what detail starts appearing. Um, and you can take it to whatever um, level you like. Another thing as well, um, don't release the stylus. Because like I briefly showed you on the on the um, the logo image, it will I will show you. So I've released that. I'm gonna go back again and you see it's left a little line. Now when you've worked upon a whole image, you know you might start flying around. And before you know it, you know, you may have changed your, you're going to end up with stuff which is um, going to distract or you from the image. And, and in my case, it's all about the viewer, giving the viewer a, a consistent image so they don't get confused. Because like I say, it's confusing enough um, to make sense of of these images. Okay, let's uh, just take that back. So you have to bear with me because I don't really know what I'm doing here. So I'll just show you with the shadows. Now this should, that's the same setting as you can see how brutal Another thing as well is um, <clears throat> forgot what I was going to say then. Um, every image is going to react differently. So now you can see with this. can see what it's done there so here is cool but um, you've lost a lot of that and you might not be able to pull that out through the other processes so what's that okay so if I just, I'm going to quickly do an area. Um, with that. So let's. Obviously you have to work on the whole image. But I would get this to a darkness which I like. Now if you want to work in the same area where you've already laid something down without you see the line appear without that line appearing um, what you'll need to do is you'll get used to the settings you see I've just pulled the exposure down to try and get it you see okay Right, so what I would do next, I will go to Dodge Highlights, and I normally have it around about, it's around about 70 odd <coughs> percent. So, and this is when I may um, enlarge the image, because I want to start seeing the detail now. Um, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, so we're dodge highlights, and what I would start doing, you can just randomly move around. See, that's not actually doing a lot for me, so I'll take the exposure up. It's still very soft, but I like the settings to be soft. Now 
Now the same is with the uh, the little demo with the logo I did at the beginning. The the more you go over an area again and again, the lighter and lighter it's going to get. just demonstrate that you see you see like that so if you want that and you um you're sort of highlighting it for yourself what i would do is go in and you would reduce the size of your the brush so you can move around that so you avoid those areas so remember the whole the whole thing to remember is um to experiment it's the whole idea behind the channel as well i mean to really know something you've got to experiment you've got to you've got to look into stuff if you want to find the truth if you see what i mean so once you've got an image you can start seeing what's coming through so remember I'm showing you sort of like the, the 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 order of stuff I tend to go through it's not always the case and once you get up to speed and stuff you'll just be following your eye or I will see the darker patches and you want to highlight them so you can still see stuff coming through this I'll have to do a little uh, a little bit on this one it's quite interesting the interesting thing about these images as well is because they're the old you see the, the, these were taken in 69 I think they used to process the photographs on the on the uh, orbiters themselves, but they would be one photograph. As you can see, apart from pixelation, obviously because it's been digitized, it's made up of um, strips as well. It's not so um, clear in this, but um, when you search for these images, you can actually see the the celluloid that they're on. And you have to trim that out. This is what this is. This is the edge of the celluloid. So, um, it's just some interesting stuff. So, once you've got this to how you like it, what I would do next, I would burn mid tones or um, you can burn and leave it on the highlights let's just do that because this is quite nice and you think we've just wasted all everything you've done but what it does it knocks it back slightly and you can get it sort of softens it out and you can see what's going on a little bit better so I will, then I would jump to midtones Is that too heavy? I don't know. Okay, back to dodge, highlights. Take it back down to my average exposure there. Um, it's not strong enough. Brush is a little bit too big. I haven't blown this Im image up uh, as well. Um, it does slow the process down. Um, and we're just demonstrating the tools. We're not um, we're not revealing structures and stuff, even so you can see it here. And this is the stage, depending on the photograph, um, I will show you some color stuff in a minute. It's much, much, much harder to get through 
to the uh, the hidden stuff, the things you're looking for. Um, but as you can see, so what it what it's doing in essence, and this is this is where it can help you where with uh, images that are blurred. You get blurred patches, or the whole thing is uh, blurred. You can see this is more it's soft, so that means it's blurred than this area, for example. And the thing about these tools is because it isolates, it works on three different tones with all that exposure range. it's you're working on individual pixels so it's not necessarily touching the other ones or it isn't touching the other ones so in blurred areas um it will isolate and crispen them up so if we take this area here as blurred Then I would go back in with the midtones. And straight away you can see the blurriness going away. It hasn't really going away, you're just you're just changing the uh, changing the tones. Back to dodge highlights. And the more detail you want to get out, the further you get into the image. That's why we blow them up. The smaller the tool becomes, um, the more detail you can pull out. Now, like I say, you, you've got to experiment with this stuff. So open up a load of images. Save them all. And just... Have a blast on them. So you can now see that area that was blurred now looking a little bit more crispy than the area that wasn't quite so blurred. So you work on it like that. So that's sort of like the minimal amount you can do. Um, and obviously, visually, you know, everyone sees everything differently. So um, the way I look at it is that you have to, I approach it where, you know, it, it's not, it's not for me. This is why I'm doing it. Um, it's for, it's for everyone. So you have to take everyone's vision into account and it's so difficult. I mean, I look back at a video last night, <clears throat> it was a Mars one. And I was like, is anyone going to be able to see this? You know, it's, it's, uh, and it's one of these things. It's not, it's not one hit wonders. You know, you've got to really spend some time doing this stuff if you want to find out the truth. Well, the truth in so much asking, when you get to a certain point, you're going to ask 50 million more questions. So, but it's a start, but you have to give it time. Doing this alone takes time. So saying that, um, we're going to move on. I hope that helps. And by the way, I said graphics tablet. This is uh, this is actually the one I use. Um, I won't give you the uh, <clears throat> company. No, I will actually. I'll just credit them. It's Wacom. It's a Wacom. This is old. You can't get this anymore. But... Look at this, you know who you are. This is uh, one of my subs trying it all out for himself. We With his new, nice, lovely uh, graphics pen. Awesome stuff, brilliant. Okay, right, so we're going <clears> to <throat> look at a darker image now. Now this is a, I've got it on here. This is an Apollo 9 image, which would have been a single celluloid photograph the reason I'm using this one um, is because it 
bloody mental anyway. But he's got dark and he's got some light. Um, there's a dark area here we're going to have a look at. And um, I will be featuring this one very soon. Um, it's worth worth a look at. Okay, what is that? That's what I've just done. Okay. Right, so in regards to dark, if I'm right or not, um, so you can see this is very low. We're pixelating. Um, we're not worrying about um, any of the, 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 the image size or anything at the moment. So if I wanted to work on this area, <coughs> I would, uh, or this area, I would uh, test it. So it's going to be, we want to go lighter, obviously. So you can start with the highlights. And uh, now with this, I am releasing the uh, the, the pen. I'm very used to this. Um, it is something that you'll get used to. But I'll demonstrate. It's not always. It's not always the case. And if you do, if it does get a little bit messy, remember, you can pretty much sort of take that out. So we'll forget about that and go back to the dodge. Now this is a difficult image um, because it has got a bit of colour in it. In fact, what we'll do, that's something I'll explain about. Um, you've got image mode here. You can either grayscale it or you can uh, go to colours, saturation, pull that down, um, OK, and that will, now you look at image mode. Oh, it's still in RGB. Um, I thought it took it to grayscale, but we can put it on grayscale anyway. It will reduce. Oh, it hasn't reduced the size of image. Don't listen to me. Sometimes I'm still learning this um, program, so we're all in the same boat to a certain extent. Okay. So dodge highlights. That's pretty nearly on max it's very rare where I have to uh, change any of uh, the hardness or the force if I pull the force up it may well get heavier you know pull more of the uh, exposure level out in one hit They don't seem to make a huge amount of uh, difference to me. But like I say, in my settings, I like to, I like it to be on uh, nice and casual, nice and soft, because I don't want to miss anything. So basically, what? What is uh, what is happening? What we're doing here is, I think, I might be wrong, but we thought we're working in reverse. So on the other one, we started with making it dark, and then working like this. We're doing light, and we are going to go dark again. So once you've pulled out enough. of what you're interested in.
Then I would go to mid-tones. So you're hitting it with the uh, mid-tones again. Go back to dodge highlights. Um, and then you're back to sort of like where we were after the initial stages of the first one we did on the light image. Okay, I'm not going to ponder on this stuff too much because um, obviously you can rewatch it. If you if I if you think I've missed anything out or I have, then just give us a shout. So that's how we would work on the dark. Here we go. Look, there's a light bit there. So we we would burn highlights. Get it to the stage. Obviously, you can be more precise with this stuff. Miss out dark areas. You don't want to make any darker. Again, like I've just explained. Back to dodge highlights. Then start working in to pull out the little bits. So using the highlights after that. Excuse me. Um, all the little bits and bobs that are highlights in the image, um, it's going to pop those out. And then back with your, your mid tones. I don't tend to use the shadow setting um, too much, but experiment with it because it, it can save you a hell of a lot of time. That's why. I say experiment because you can spend hours going through some processes when it could have only taken you a few minutes at the beginning. So always, always have a, always have a check. Okay. Right. We're going to have a quick look at color. I'll show you how it reacts with color. And um, this is uh, PIA 2308. Zero, if you're interested, I think it's Morif, Morif Valleys or something. It's on Mars. Uh, it's a really funky image as it is. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pick a bit with the color, and um, we're not gonna go in and do any detail. I just want to show you how the these react with the image. So if you were working on this image anyway. Um, I would on this in the lighter areas. I'm going to avoid the darker areas. I would burn mid tones. Okay. So, what you can see is I've actually pulled the saturation on this, made it a little bit stronger initially, just so we can get. Um, it does, it does make it better for you to work on initially. Like I say, every image is different, so they're going to react differently. So you can see what's happening to this image. The more passes I put on it, the richer it's making these colours. And that can become a, a bit of a problem. Um, in some of these color images uh, so you might have to I'll show you what I mean so that was the mid-tones let's just have a look at burn shadows now you know, I know that's strong so I'm going to pull the exposure right down you 
Now that's making it even, you see, even richer, richer. Um, now what I mean by this, what is um, going on, especially when you're getting in, taking your details out, It just simply, it just gets very, uh, so remember that was initially just trying to pull out more details on the whole image. And when you start working in with detail, See how that the highlights that's pulling that out too much. I'm not going to delete it because it is a bit of a bit of a demo. What you'll find with these images is that you have to do those initial processes which I showed you with the black and white more than once i mean some of these images it, it would be dark light dark light dark light um until you can extract that detail they're very well concealed a lot of these i'm not sure if there's a video about this image i think there is go and have a look at it there's some crazy stuff in there so, for example, if I wanted to go back to highlights now, because it's got so light that you need to define those details again. So you can see every time I do it, it pulls that color again just show you on shadows go away In some cases it's good you know if you're working on this stuff on a personal basis um, then it's fine if you're happy with it you're happy with it but I have to think about other people looking at it. So you can see how this can get too much. And what I would have to do because it's 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 too overwhelming for the for the viewer. In my eyes anyway. I would have to go into here. And you can immediately see it basically gives more clarity for what I'm looking for. So remember, if you're working on the color image, check it out. Um, it might be better to switch it to um, grayscale so if I've missed anything uh, let me know um, but like I say it's it's all about experimenting um, and I don't really change any of these um, I can't even remember what that was on Some of that's... anyway just have a play with it and uh, just don't be too heavy handed with it. Um, the experiment, experiment in to see how hard you have to work to pull the, the, uh, the stuff you're looking for out of the image is pretty much going to denote if you stay with color or, or, or black and white. So, um, 
So yeah, I hope I have remembered everything. I'm just thinking. Uh, yep, I think uh, that'll do. If I have to do another one, I have to do another one. Uh, look, I hope this uh, helped. Um, and let us know. Definitely let us know. So, okay, I'll see you soon. Cheers.